Folks, welcome back to a brand new season of Tractor Talk. This is season two. For those of you that have followed along, we did season one, oh, about a year and a half ago. It's been a while, time flies. We've got some fun stuff coming up for you today. We're gonna to show you a new parking pad that I'm putting down for my tractor attachments. I got a few of those to try to organize. I found some pretty neat tractors you guys might wanna check out recently, browsing Facebook Marketplace. We have some tips on tractor safety, mowing on hillsides, around ponds, dangerous areas where you can flip over, and we'll see what's going on at Tractor by Net. You know, I'm a big supporter of forums. I encourage you guys to, to seek answers from others in the tractor community as well. But first, over 40 years ago, a farmer in Ohio discovered how to grow gold. Let's check that out now. Right now, I'm standing on some farm property in Claremont County. The exact location must, for security reasons, be kept a secret. That's because the farmer who owns this property has discovered the genetic secret for growing gold. Well, some uh, years back, I found some gold seeds down in the root cellar, and I planted them, and I figured that'd be a good cash crop. Before you contact me requesting gold tree seeds, relax. Jerry is not a farmer, and that is not a gold tree. They hope the bars will be as popular as the pet rock, and if they are, they may soon be harvesting real gold bars. Alrighty, folks, so anyway, that's, uh, that's how marketing was back in, in the 1980s, huh? Pretty funny. So I wanna to talk to you about the new headphones that I got. These are, you know, when you're on an open station tractor, all right? I've been using just these old guys. These are actually what I use at the shooting range, but they're starting to crack and split and fall apart. And I've tried out some various versions of headphones over the years and uh, just, you know, muffs and whatnot. And so I decided to give these a shot. These are 3M brand work tunes, okay? And they have some different variations, but these do have the gel pads on there. Typically when I'm on my tractor, I'm gonna be on it for an hour or two, maybe sometimes longer than that at a time. So I wanted something really comfortable. Um, again, Bluetooth, so you can pair it with your phone, listen to music, listen to a podcast, listen to an audiobook, whatever you want. Does have a built-in microphone as well. So you can take and receive calls right from this. I probably have four to five hours on these now, uh, working flawlessly as far as connecting. Very easy to hear the sound that's coming through there while you're on there. Does a great job of deadening the sound around there. I think it uh, reduces it 23 decibels if I remember correctly, but the specs are on Amazon. Now I will say that once I probably got an hour or beyond wearing them, um, when I had sunglasses on, it was really starting to press in the sunglasses into my in the sides of my head, right above my ears. And so that started to be uncomfortable. I don't think that that's really the fault of the earmuffs themselves. I had a little bit of the same experience with the older ones that I would use as well, but it is a downside. I adjusted my glasses up a little bit so they weren't pressing to the same spot. That seemed to correct it. Now I did buy another brand. I wanna put, I don't know, maybe another 10, 15 hours on these two before I tried those out, but I'm gonna, I think try to keep a set with the Summit tractor, try to keep a set with the 1025R. Don't have to worry about my cab station machines, although I do like to listen to music or the audiobooks while I'm on my tractor, so who knows, maybe I try it out in there anyways. But it's actually a pretty common thing that I'm asked about what I use for hearing protection, and so thought I'd fill you in trying something new myself. If any of you have these, I'd like to know what others think about it as well. You can read the Amazon reviews, it's pretty highly rated on there. 3M is known to make good things, but it's one of those one of those deals, right? I wish I would have been more cautious about my hearing when I was younger. Tractors are loud, but they don't seem like they're that loud, but uh, that exposure over time can really reduce your hearing and it's taking its toll on my ears. All right, next up, scouring Facebook Marketplace, actually, Kind of looking for a boat right now, but nonetheless, these unique tractors uh, slipped into my feed. I gotta give these folks points for creativity. Which one do you guys like the best?
proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. So our project this week is putting in some parking pads for all of my tractor attachments or at least a good chunk of them and something I've been planning on doing this year and finally getting around to it. I first tilled up the areas just to kind of define and get a visual uh, for where I wanted to put it and then um, ended up putting down some of the road fabric. I, I bought extra for that and that turned out to be kind of a pain in the butt and you'll see that here in, in just a minute as well. I like the road fabric. It's going to prevent weeds from coming up through uh, at least minimize weeds from coming up through over the years. It's also going to prevent gravel from sinking down into the topsoil and needing to replenish it. So it is an additional cost, but the idea is it is cheaper in the long run. Well, for these parking pads, I did not need to go nearly as thick as I was going to, like on a driveway or around the barn where I'm going to do in the future, where that would be six, eight, ten inches, depending on the area. Here, I was trying to get by with just enough to to make do <laughs> and that proved to be a little bit problematic trying to spread that out because it was so thin you know so when i'm trying to spread it all out in some of the bigger areas that are in the middle and taper those and feather them out towards the edges well i just didn't have a lot of material to work with and i thought i was being careful but <laughs> you'll see on more than one occasion i uh i snagged that that road fabric and that was a little bit of, of an annoyance but at the end of the day I'm not driving over this. This is going to be just for stationary equipment sitting on it. It's going to get the job done. I wanted to invest as little as possible uh, to make it usable, make it functional, make it long lasting. And I still think I've accomplished that goal. Between the gravel that I had delivered and the road fabric, I believe I'm somewhere around 1800 bucks, give or take. Uh, so I have a lot of linear feet though. I'm not sure how many linear feet I have. We'll have to add that up. But it's a good chunk of space for storage and I would love to have it covered but I just don't I just don't have the space inside to cover everything up um, if you guys have ideas on how I can cover all these outdoor implements I'd be interested in knowing more about that
folks, we're in the middle of summer right now and boy, there's a lot of mowing going on. You gotta maintain your properties and it could be on your tractor. It could be on a zero turn. Shoot, you could be just riding around the property on your four wheeler having fun, but danger is always lurking. You know, preach it to your kids. I talk to my kids about it regularly. Accidents can happen. There's things you can do to prevent that from happening or at least minimize the chances. And going through news articles, there's a lot of folks that unfortunately have passed away in these kinds of accidents. Just terrible to see it happen, but it happens time and time again. It's a topic worth serious consideration. So what are some things that you can do as an operator to be safe around ponds? Number one, before you mow the area, whether it's an area you've mowed all the time or not, walk the edges, okay? They can often be unstable, have sinkholes if you've had heavy rains, or if there's critters digging into the banks, anything else. But if an edge crumbles, well, it's over for you. You're tipping over and going into the water. Keep your weight low, very low, all right? The lower the center of gravity, the better. You're gonna be on an incline typically when you're on around a pond or on a ditch bank, and so do everything you can to be stable on the ground. Use four wheel drive, all right? Oftentimes when you're on uneven terrain, if you're only in two wheel drive, there's no braking power to the front axle, there's no traction in the front axle, so engaged four wheel drive is gonna work to your advantage. Keep in mind that cab tractors are gonna have a higher center of gravity, so they're gonna naturally be tippier. That makes it even more important to lower your center of gravity with things like liquid ballast and wheel weights. Widen your footprint out. I've talked many times about how tractors are very tippy side to side. They're just long and narrow, skinny machines, all right? So you can do a few things. You can put wheel spacers on. Many tractor wheels will have offset hubs, so they're gonna have a narrow and a wide position. Some of your larger utility tractors and maybe even older Compact tractors will have bolt-on hubs that have as many as eight different positions to get really wide if you need to. And of course, on some tractors, like I showed on my 1025R a long time ago, you can actually get an aftermarket set of dual wheels on there to really widen it out, really give that additional stability. Try to mow when you're gonna have the best traction, all right? That means not only with the tires that are on your tractor itself, but also the conditions. Don't mow when it's dewy in the morning. Don't mow right after a rainstorm. Let everything dry out so that you can have the best grip available. Put the odds in your favor. As we've shown previously, sometimes it's best just to back up, okay? Just go straight back up and down the hill instead of side hilling it. That can be very dangerous depending on the slope that you're working with. Yes, it can be very tedious. It can take a very long time to get the project done, but at least you know you're gonna do it the safest way possible. It should go without saying, but take your time. Go slow, low range. There's no reason to be speeding around. That is just encouraging something to go wrong. The object here is to get it done and get home without a story to share. And the last thing I would mention is to have an exit strategy. If you do roll into your pond, Think about that seat belt. Get that system hammered down so you can unbuckle and get out of there. Think about the clothing that you're wearing, all right? If your clothing gets trapped on a piece of your tractor when you're trying to get off, I mean, you have critical seconds to make this happen. So don't wear a bunch of loose clothing. This is when panic really starts to set in and it's critical. It could be a life and death situation. A lot of these folks that were in these pond accidents were trapped underneath their equipment. It's a terrible way to go. And hey, hey. Let's be careful out there. A few big updates with Summit Tractors I want to share with you now. The first one is a game changer for a lot of folks, and I get a lot of questions on this too. I, just to clarify my position, I, I help to advertise Summit Tractors, kind of like how I advertise all the affiliate products that I, that I uh, partner with the different manufacturers, and, and you know I advertise all the products that I sell myself, but I'm purely an advertiser for Summit, all right? So the first big update, all right? If you guys have been following along, Summit Tractors is available at retailers, okay? Kind of in the farm space, the outdoor space, Home Depot, Tractor Supply, Atwoods, Runnings, Farm and Fleet, but coming very soon, later this month, most likely, you're gonna be able to buy the tractor online on those retailers' websites and it'll get shipped right to you in all the lower 48 states. That's a huge deal. Some will be set up to service it in whatever area you're in, okay? They're not gonna just abandon you. They're not gonna sell you a tractor and abandon you, all right? They, they partner with all these other mechanics and tractor dealers that are in other areas to service your tractor if you need it, or they can send you parts and you can handle the service yourself. I mean, sometimes if something goes wrong, it could be like a, a fitting on a, on a hydraulic hose, for example, and if you just want to swap that out yourself instead of having to take it into a dealer, well, I mean, you're welcome to do that. The second big improvement, okay, and, and again, I, I think I've said this from the beginning that one of the reasons why I wanted to work with Summit was they are about continuous improvement, all right, and 
the vision's just kind of aligned as far as that goes, and I, I don't want to work with a company that's just going to be okay doing nothing, right? Just kind of treading water and, and seeing how things go. So they're, they're pushing the envelope a bit there. I'm wanting to try to keep breaking down barriers and making it more accessible on how they sell the equipment, on, on the features that they put on their tractor. And they've extended their powertrain warranty by a full year. So they now have a seven year powertrain warranty. This is gonna be retroactive to anybody that already owns a Summit tractor as well. So it was six years and 3,000 hours, now it's seven years or 3,000 hours, which is a lot of hours, all right? And we've talked about how much time the average owner puts on their tractor before, under 100 hours a year. I mean, you're typically gonna put a lot of hours on the first year, you have a lot of projects lined up, and then after you get those projects completed, you kinda go into maintenance mode and put fewer hours on those subsequent years. Pretty common scenario. So this reassurance here of seven years is pretty awesome and something they did not have to do, but it just kind of, I think, highlights the confidence that they have in their machine. And lastly, some of you eagle-eyed viewers have noticed I got a different Summit tractor now, and I actually have been running up until just recently the very first Summit tractor ever produced. It was actually an engineering unit made right in a lab, and so it was kind of, well, it wasn't a production unit, right? And so uh, finally, kind of after we got through all the weeds of everything else and they got through their transition and, and um, kind of initial push through and, and to the retailers, well, we got a new one, okay? So I've put about 10 hours on this so far. The big difference is that there is now a new loader. This is a Summit branded loader by Quickie, which is a huge, huge worldwide loader manufacturer. Uh, still a self-leveling loader. There's a few, you know, design changes, I guess, on there. And we'll do a whole video all about this at some point too, but it does have an increased lift capacity, um, a little bit of a redesign, skits your quick attach on there a new loader joystick as well, and then to couple along with that increased lift capacity is a, uh, a beefier, a heavier duty front axle that's on there as well. And again, this comes down to continuous improvement and something that we do even with our own products that, uh, that we manufacture at Goodworks Tractors. We, we just look for little tweaks, little ways that are subtleties that will improve the customer experience or uh, maybe strengthen it if we have had a repetitive issue of some kind in the field or whatever it is, right? But that's what I like about this, all right? They're always looking to get better. You didn't see a price change at the retail side of things. They just added more value, more bang for the buck. Alrighty, folks. So we are implementing a plan out here from another YouTuber. Well, he's, he's a YouTuber, but he's got his own business. His name's Jeff Sturgis with Whitetail Habitat Solutions. I've followed him for 15 or more years um, on forums and read one of his books, watched a lot of his videos. and. Really good guy, and, and finally I had my own chunk of property. I wanted to have him out, and so he came out um, in June, and we walked all around. He put together a whole habitat plan, and the idea is that he takes into account what you want to do with the land, how you're going to use it, you know, whether it's for your family or for hunting or for wildlife or gardens or farming, whatever. Looks at all the surrounding properties, looks at what's missing, what you have, all the other components, and then gives you something on what you can do to try to optimize it for wildlife and for us i am a big deer hunter so i wanted to get uh, more deer onto my property uh, we don't farm we don't have animals we bought this place and it just had these pastures here um, and so we had a few goals in mind right we we, we like to use our property for the four wheelers atvs just taking the dog for walks just for enjoyment we love looking out the back windows and seeing deer that are in the food plots seeing the rabbits and birds and everything else all over as far as deer hunting goes what was missing in this area was a big food source, all right? There's a lot of cover, there's all sorts of water, both moving water and still water. A lot of the other components were there, but there's no, there's no big ag in this area, so there's not huge cornfields or beans or anything else. And so what we did is we put a huge food source kind of right in the middle of the property, and then everything else around it, we're making maybe like tiny little satellite food sources, but gonna build out the cover and give a lot more cover and security and safety for the deer to bed and to travel through uh, towards, or to and from, I should say, the center of the property and out. And then the plan is to kind of hunt those travel corridors kind of on pinch points in different areas um, as they're going to and from the major food source. And so long-term, all these areas, like what I'm standing in right now, uh, this year and, and last year as well, they are a, a heavy duty screen, all right? This will grow way taller than I will. We just planted this less than a month ago. It's already almost waist high, uh, some of it is. And it'll get, well, if it's like last year, it'll get 
eight, nine, ten foot tall. Uh, the stuff that we planted in a month earlier in June actually got to 13 or 14 foot tall, which I think was too tall. It wanted to fold over a little bit too easy. I think this uh, the, the eight or nine foot range is about optimal. And I actually just planted some just last week in the very beginning of August as well thinking that might still get to be six foot by the time hunting season rolls around. And it looks like corn, but it's not. It's actually, it's actually this HD screen. There's no, it's not sorghum. It, there's no food on there at all. And so that kind of helps prevent raccoons and other critters from knocking it all over. But next spring, we're gonna plant all of this stuff that looks like corn all around the perimeters of these fields into switchgrass. And within a couple of years, that's typically gonna be five or six foot tall and be a lot more natural looking habitat you know that's going to be good not just for for screening things but good for rabbit cover and other critter cover and birds and everything else and just really hopefully enhance the the wildlife habitat that's out here and the diversity that we can hold so on all the satellite kind of little small plots that uh, just look a lot tinier we've planted clover varieties in there clover blends that'll hopefully be perennial and just come back year after year with pretty minimal maintenance and then the huge plot that's kind of in the middle of the property in that big pasture is uh, we use some of jeff's uh, fall power greens and a brassica blend as well we did plant corn <laughs> pretty unsuccessfully in the other half of that uh, you can see it's all weed filled I didn't actually spray that section, I should have um, in hindsight, and I went to use a, a cedar for a lot of my planting that I had bought uh, off of Amazon last year, and that thing, I, I gotta say, it's, it's a hunk of junk. So it, it failed me pretty miserably, um, had some really heavy seeding rates because uh, the gates weren't working properly, the chain you kept falling, the, it was a mess. The chain, the, the gates, the, uh, the hoppers were all uh, chintzy plastic and breaking off and it just turned into a nightmare. So I tried to broadcast corn out there because I had no other option really. And I did double the rate um, and it is coming up a decent amount, but it's, it's driving me nuts. So I may end up spraying that and putting something else in, but we wanted corn. I'll probably get a corn planter for next year uh, to try to do that the right way and, and spray it off and everything else. But we'll keep you updated on progress as things roll along. I know a lot of you guys are outdoorsmen out there too, and whether it's for deer hunting or for just enjoying nature, there's a lot of things you can do to improve your property. Um, we'll be planting uh, about three or four acres of wildflowers as well, just for pollinators and additional critter habitat to enjoy. <music>
that in and of itself maybe isn't the worst part about it, but it's an indicator that there's something big going on and that this dealer needs to step up in their service department and get something done about it. And so that's where the good thing about these forums comes into play again, no matter what um, level of experience you have with tractors. If you're brand new to the community, if you just got your first one, or if you've been on them your whole life, right? There's, there's always these new weird things that pop up that you just never even thought would happen, right? And so um, increasing your knowledge base, so even just not commenting and just kind of reading it and taking it in and soaking it up helps build your confidence in how your machine should operate. And you know what? If you do have a question on something that maybe you don't think's working right, or maybe you have a project and you're not sure the right tool, or you're just looking for ideas on how to get something done, it's a great way to do so. So Tractor by Net is gonna be kind of a general broad scope tractor forum encompassing all the brands out there. Uh, John Deere, Kubota, Summit, uh, Mahindra, you name it, they're gonna have them. Whereas there are some other specific forums out there too, like Green Tractor Talk, Orange Tractor Talk, that will be very um, targeted to just John Deere tractors or Kubota tractors, that kind of thing. So it's a great resource. They're completely free to utilize too, so why not do it? Product of the week is going to be the Dirt Dog Cultipacker. Now you're looking at a 72 inch Cultipacker on our Summit TX25, and you can use a little bit wider Cultipacker on your machine. Even on a 1025R, you could get away with this if you wanted to. You're not really putting a big load on the tractor, it's rolling along the ground while it's working, and so it's one of the few exceptions where going significantly wider than the tractor is going to be okay. There are, of course, downsides to going too wide as well, where it could be a lot easier to hit something accidentally because you're not used to having something sticking out a foot on either side of your machine and so you want to weigh the pros and the cons of that they're more expensive too and all that kind of thing but what are you using a cultipacker for well i use it for seed preparation putting in food plots if you want to put a new lawn in those kinds of things right and you can use it a couple of different times one after you till up and prep your ground you can kind of pack it down a little bit and firm it up so that it's not super fluffy and soft and makes uh, all these little rows for the seed to kind of get trapped in and whatnot. Then after you go through and seed, you can go back again and cultipack, pack and what that's gonna do is press that seed down into the ground. So it has a lot better seed to soil contact, which is critical for germination. And I planted this food plot out here, I think five days ago, and we already have a lot of germination happening, uh, some clover plots as well. Everything is really sprouting up. I am super pleased with the progress. Now timing always helps, right? I looked at the forecast, I knew that we had some rain coming up, and so if you can time it like I did and, and maybe in 24, 48 hours after you uh, broadcast or, or, or put your seed down, get a rain. That's really gonna help drive it into the soil as well on top of that, and this is, you can see, this is it's perfect for what I was looking to do. And, very handy. These things will last for a long time. This is a made in America product uh, with US and imported parts. The whole frame and everything here is all made in the USA uh, down in Georgia. They do import the individual um, rollers here on the Cultipacker itself, but greasable Zerks on the side. Built in parking stand, quick hitch compatible for Cat 1 and Cat 2 on all the bigger ones. I think it's 72 and, and bigger. Now, we don't carry every single version of these that are available from Dirt Dog, but uh, the ones that we do stock are going to be available in gray, kind of a neutral color that goes along with anything. If you want to get a specific color, green or orange or red, we can special order those directly from the factory. Lead times aren't too bad, and we'll just ship it factory direct right to you. Uh, there's going to be versions with bigger. Uh, rollers on there as well. If you want to, they can get really pricey if you're going like with an eight foot and a 16 inch uh, Kilter Packer wheel on there. But a lot of options available, something that's gonna last you for years and years and years, and you're just gonna reap the rewards. Well, folks, there you have it. Action packed episode for today. I hope you enjoyed it. There's a little bit of something for everybody. If you've got some ideas for future Tractor Talk videos, well, send us an email, tractortalk at goodworkstractors.com. Whether you've got a, a project of your own you want to show off, or a tractor, or you, you found a cool story that others should know about, well, send it our way. Now, here at Goodworks Tractors, we sell tractor attachments. We ship them all over the country every day of the week. So if you're looking for a tool for your front end loader or your three-point hitch, more than likely, we can help you out. So head on over to goodworkstractors.com to see what we have to offer. If you enjoyed today's video, we'd love to have you tag along, hit subscribe down below, leave a comment, give a thumbs up. And we have over 700 other videos out there too, so take your time and enjoy those as well. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe, we'll see you soon.